In the last lesson, we focused on creating category records into the ESA database. Now in this lesson, we're going to focus on reading those category records that we have created and displaying them in our dropdown button. To start, we'll create a function called read category. And this read, in this read category, we're going to call the category collection, just like we did in the previous function, widget.esa.category. So there are two ways of actually accessing ESA on this same class. You can use it by passing it as an argument to your function or just calling it by saying widget.esa. So you have two options. Then let's get our categories is equals to category collection dot where dot find all. That's the command or that's the line of code to use to get all the categories. Now we have them in this variable, but now we want to set them. If you recall in our, pre in our previous uh, lesson, we actually, we manually set our categories, but now we want to set whatever has been picked to this variable right here. So first things first, we'll remove the, um, Category is manually inserted. We'll change our data type from string to category because it's expecting a cate categories type. And then we're going to declare this um, variable as nullable by passing that symbol. Thus, now we'll get some few errors on the dropdown, but we'll come and sort it out. So now that we have that, we can set state and say that categories what you're using at the top is of course to get categories, but there'll be a small bug. This is because you know, most of our ESA processes require an await keyword. So let's set an async keyword to our function and allow this to have a wait so that we can actually get our respective um, uh, records that we need. There's also, there's a bug here. Let's see. Uh, I think I wait, sorry. I had set it as a function when it's actually a variable sorted. So that's as the simple code to actually get your records from a collection. And then we just set it into the variable that we're actually using to pass to the dropdown button. Great. So now let's go and sort our bugs. Uh, our bugs are main, mainly involve the data type that we have, be, we have changed at the top here. You can see we have actually changed our, our data type from string to category. We also need to change this on the dropdown value. It should expect a category and we should no longer manually set it. So we we'll write category and then we declare it as an allowable variable. So when we come down here, we start by from this part. The reason why we have a bug on the map function is because it's expecting the categories to be initialized. So we just need to tell it that it's a nullable variable. Then from here, we have to set the string from string to category. And then same thing to here, same thing here because it's expecting the category type. Then on the end value, if you recall, our category has two properties, ID and name, but what we want the user to view is the name, the word work, the word school, the word home. That's what we want. So we set it as name. Same thing, yeah, we change the data type to category and we also, and we're done. So our bugs, uh, we no longer have uh, any bug. So another thing we need to do, if you look at down here, we haven't used the read category function, right? So we need to use it in two places. We want to use it in a place where when we, when we navigate to the create routine screen, we want it to, to populate the collections that already exist. And also we want at the point where we're adding a category, at the moment it clears, it updates the dropdown with the category records that currently exist. So to do that, to be able to set the categories at the point of navigating to the create routine screen, we use the inbuilt function in its state and, and pass 
feed categories. So that's the first step. The second step is to go to the add category. At the moment of clearing, let's read whatever is in the category records and update it to the dropdown. Now you'll find the dropdown will hold the new data that uh, the new category that we have added. And then there's something else we need to add in the dropdown value, we need to set it at as um, null. I, I found out that there is a bug if you don't do that. So we're going to set it at null so that there are no issues in terms of the IDs and the categories being considered, uh, there being a conflict between the IDs. So first we set it as null, then we set the categories as equals to get categories. So let's try and see how it looks from our app. So here's our app. So let's click on the plus sign. Currently, okay, previously, previously I had some records. We had, some, I had some categories here. Let's just create a new category and see, or better yet, yet um, yeah, let's add a new category like uh, business add. So you'll see the business has been added, right? And if you go back and decide to navigate, the screen will always get the categories first and display them here. And the moment you add a new category like leisure and click on add, it will always populate on the dropdown. So our code is actually working. We are good to go. So from this lesson, you find that we are able to not only create category records, but we are also able to read them using our small function over here. And we're able to display it in our dropdown uh, that's over here. So that's all. So in the next lesson, we're going to focus on now creating routine records. See you on the next one.